Hey, welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. Sorry about all this, because we are eating healthy in the Walters household. That's right, no carbs, no sugar, no fun. So I cleared all the snacks and junky stuff from upstairs so they will not tempt my family. Not gonna lie, it's been a little bit of a rough week. Um, a lot of childish temper tantrums, a lot of yelling, a lot of gnashing of teeth, all by me, of course, but it'll be worth it, right? When I'm eating my kale salad, it's fine. Fine, but the good news is tonight's quilt is called Milky Way. It's a sweet and adorable quilt using Lily and Loom fabric, and I'm hoping it will take care of that sugar craving I've been having. So let's get started. Maybe just one, right? <laughs> Back on track. I have my water and my granola, but mm, I have something that is sweet and calorie free, this Lily and Loom Fat Quarter Bundle, which I'm gonna use for tonight's quilt. I get to open this up. I'm loving the blues, the small prints, the cute little flowers, and those little bitty triangles. Oh, so cute. And then the teals we have here, and of course the corals and the pinks, which do not represent cotton candy at all. Man, that sounds so good. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna carve into these and get making my quilt. It tastes like when your bobbin runs out and you only have two inches left to sew. Like that feeling is what that tastes like. Back to the sweet stuff, the Milky Way. I have my fat quarters, and the way this quilt works is two fat quarters make two blocks, which is kind of fun. And so you're gonna pair them together in like colors. And I think Monique Diller did an amazing job designing this pattern. So I picked these two, I think they're gonna look beautiful together. And I'm actually gonna cut them at the same time just to make it a little quicker. Fold it nicely and just cut it into strips and then sub cut those. And these strips are actually gonna make an adorable scrappy binding. Now I don't love binding, but I cannot wait to put this on the quilt. Now I have my strips, I'm gonna sub cut them. So this big ruler is going to move out of the way. I'm going to pull my smaller ruler in. Oh, this lack of sugar is giving me the brain fog. I have my mat upside down. There we go. It makes it a lot easier to cut when you can read the numbers. This Lily and Loom fabric is almost as sweet as a Milky Way. Now, if you're wanting to get your hands on some of this fabric, we have a coupon code just on this Lily and Loom fabric. And you can check that out in the description box below. So I've got my first two fat quarters cut up and I'm gonna do a couple more and then show you how this block comes together. All right, just loving the colors and how these little birds look like peeps. You know those marshmallow gooey things? I mean, I don't really care for them. I always put those in the kids' Easter baskets, but I'm so desperate for sugar right now, I probably would eat, I probably would eat one. But what I'd really love is a Milky Way. They're so much better than Twix. I'm just kidding, Twix is totally my favorite. It's crunchy, caramely, oh so good. Okay, back to the Milky Way quilt that is. I have my two colors of fabric, my blue and my teal, that's so cute. And I'm gonna make half square triangles using the two at a time method, which is super easy. On the back side of the lighter fabrics, I'm gonna draw a line from one corner to the other diagonally, and then sew a quarter inch on each side of that line. So I'm gonna trim on that line and then press them open to make my half square triangles. Flip my mat around. All right, let's see it. Oh, it's so cute. It's a triangle of triangles. Oh, too adorable. I'm just gonna press them carefully, nice and flat. And then I'm gonna square these up by taking off the little dog ears and then do a stitch and flip technique. What is even in granola? Is that a sunflower seed or did it fall out of the bird feeder? It won't go away. Well, let's do some stitching and flipping for the next part of our block. I have my bigger squares of the two colors and my smaller squares. It's like your portion when you're not on a diet and your portion when you are on a diet. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the half square triangles, drawing a line diagonal on the back of the fabrics. 
So I have my bigger squares, my smaller squares with a diagonal line, and all I'm gonna do is put them in the corners of the bigger squares, like so, stitch on the line, and then trim. This block is gonna look amazing because one part is gonna be darker than the other side. Kind of like a milk chocolate Milky Way and a dark chocolate Milky Way. I think I do like Milky Ways better, the quilt and the candy. Now I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away from that line I've just sewn. And I could get out my rotary cutter and mat. I think I'll just use my scissors real quick. All I have to do is press that open and my block will be halfway done. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side, just like that. my big girl panties on. I can do this, I can do it. It's time to assemble this block. Okay, using our squares, our half square triangles, and our stitchy flippy pointy blocks, we're gonna put this quilt together. And a half square triangle is going to go in the center and it's gonna kinda set the tone for the whole block. We have the lighter side and the darker side and so we're gonna kinda go with that theme with the placement of the fabrics. These little guys are gonna go on one side. See how we have half the star coming out? And then this will go on the other side. And then now we need to put in our half square triangles. They're going to follow the same as the center, like so. And then in go the corners. Genius, right? I can't even take credit for it. But this is a beautiful, beautiful block. And what I'm going to do is sew the blocks in rows and sew the rows together. Check that adorable block out. That's almost as good as a piece of chocolate right after your kale salad. Well, I'm gonna make a few more of these and I'll show you what they look like. Sorry about that crying moment earlier. I don't know what came over me. I'm totally fine now. The water is great. I have the blocks for my first row done and they are so cute. So I'm gonna lay them out. And what I love about this quilt, it's nice and small, nice and quick to put together. So here are the first four blocks. And as you can see, each block has the lighter and the darker side. And what I'm doing is arranging it so that the lighter side's touching and then the darker. And this is gonna make a really cool stripe that goes diagonally down the quilt. I think it's so cute. I love how it's turning out. What? Oh no, one of my points are off. You. It's your fault. I don't make mistakes. I'll be back. <sighs> Much better. Mama needs her juice. Now let's sew this row together. Ah, oh, it feels good to be back. Isn't this quilt turning out so adorable? You're starting to see those stripes come out. Oh, I love it. Now, if you want to find out where to get this pattern or that coupon code off this Lily and Loom fabric, you can find that in the description box below. Well, let's get this quilt put together. And this cute little quilt is finished. I'm super excited to start quilting it. I've got the perfect Lily and Loom floral fabric for the back. Let's get to it. I changed my mind. Cheetos are way better than Twix or Milky Way. Problem is they're so cheesy and I don't wanna get that on my quilt. But Craftsy instructor Angela Tong has an amazing idea and an amazing name, might I just say, she uses chopsticks for her Cheetos so she doesn't get the cheese on her quilt. How amazing is that? Hold on, I'm gonna have to get the instructions real quick. When I eat Chinese food, I just use a fork. Um, Chinese chopstick A use does not move. Which one is A or B? That looks easy enough. Uh. Mm, so good. Uh oh. Mm, I better stop before I make a cheesy mess. I'll just set you over here so you're nice and close. Okay, let's get to the quilting. I know that much better than chopsticks. So I've been kind of having a, a debate, not between water or wine or sugar or healthy stuff. I've been trying to decide what thread I'm gonna use to quilt this quilt since I started making it. I don't know, should I go with the sensible light yellow that's gonna blend over everything? or ooh, the shiny gold thread that pretty much says, look at me, I'm amazing. Hold on, I work with everybody, but I stand out. 
Oh, I don't know. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is use them both. Since this quilt was so easy to put together, I can put just a little bit more effort into the quilting. So I think in the darker colors, I'll use that gold, but in the lighter colors where I don't want that gold to really kind of stand out too much, I'll use the light yellow. What do you think? Should I do it? Okay, well, I'm gonna do it anyway, so let's go. I'm gonna use a feathery, flowery meander, and I love it because it's so quick and easy to quilt, but it also looks great with that gold thread. So what I'm doing is starting out with a nice little swirl, doesn't have to be too big, and I'm adding the petals of my flower or feather, working my way out from the center of that swirl, quilting those petal-like shapes, working my way back to where I started the swirl. Now, once I get back to that area, I'm gonna use echoing to move around so that I can add another flower slash feather. Echoing around those petals is gonna help get me where I need to add my next feathery, flowery meander. In the middle half square triangle of the block, I wanna use the same thread color in the darker fabric there as well. And I'm gonna do a fun continuous curve flower that starts from one point of the triangle, goes into the center, and then quilts petals going from point to point until we move on to the other side of that triangle. And I have those little star points and all I'm doing is a nice basic, curvy, continuous curve design, filling in just that color of the points of the star. But I don't wanna use the gold in the lighter colors because I think it's gonna stand out a little too much. So I'm gonna switch to the yellow thread and do some nice, dense swirls in that area. Now quilting swirls is really easy once you get the hang of it. All you have to do is quilt your nice elongated swirl and then echo, echo, echo. And the great thing about the matching thread color is if it doesn't look great, no one will know because you can't see it anyway. And if you're not sure about how to quilt those, well, just so happens I have some free quilting diagrams for you. You can download those by checking out the description box below. I've drew out both of these designs so that you can print them out and trace right over them. So be sure to check those out. And if you're wanting to know where to get this adorable pattern, that information is down there as well. So I've got my two thread colors ready to go. I'm gonna finish up this quilt and I'll see you in just a bit. Well, tomorrow it's back to the eating healthy and the diet, but tonight was all about this sweet, sweet quilt. Milky Way quilt with the adorable Lily and Loom fabrics turned out so much fun, and I can't decide what I liked better, sorting through the fabrics or the quilting. Actually, it's the quilting on the back that I love the most. Look at that adorable floral print. And if you're wanting to get your hands on some of this Lily and Loom fabric, don't forget we have a coupon code just for you. It's in the description box below. Be sure to comment on here. Let us know what you think. Is it Milky Way, Twix, or Cheetos? That's your favorite. And be sure to subscribe because you never know what's going to happen on the Midnight Quilt Show. See you next time.